you and the team have implemented a number of significant changes at CSIRO over the last years since your tenure. What successes stand out for you? First off, it's probably worth remembering that um, we had a bit of a sort of near-death experience. I mean, CSIRO is a remarkable organisation, been around now for more than eight, eight decades. And at that time, there were some real challenges on the financial side, um, on potentially breaking up the whole organisation, um, and therefore recognising that change was needed. My wonderful uh, Deputy Chief Executive, Ron Sandan, often talked about the last roll of the dice. Um, we had that chance for change and we grasped it. Um, in fact, science leads change and as a science leading organisation we needed to just uh, move on from the way we were, were doing things, positively so, building on the wonderful past. It required us to, to differentiate. Why are we different? Why are we here? Uh, it required us to focus our efforts uh, on some of the major challenges and opportunities that we have in our nation, in the energy area, in the health area, in the water area climate domain. Um, it required us to partner in new ways uh, with people across the organisation, um, locally, regionally and internationally. Um, and it required us to actually harness that muscle which is the enormous power of, uh, of CSRO. You know we're in the top 1% of world's R&D labs in 13 research areas and so many of the exciting innovations of today and tomorrow happen at these strange interfaces. So grasping um, those opportunities and you know the flagships I think have, uh, have been conceived and have been funded and, uh, and, and staffed and are delivering in, in so many wonderful ways. Um, so that's, that, that's a standout um, for me. If you were able to sit down and speak to an individual scientist or a, or a staff member about their contribution going forward into the future of CSIRO, what would you say to them? I'd say be the best you can possibly be. Uh, and that's part of our job in, uh, in leadership in the environment is to provide that environment where, where people can really excel. I'd also say make sure you connect with the best. Uh, focus your efforts, really focus on quality delivery day in, day out on the important things. And make sure that our key strategic advantage of crossing boundaries, you feel comfortable with that ambiguity and working across boundaries. And I'd also say look after your time, where you use that time, and look after your health. Uh, really work at that, uh, being the best you can be at work, in your head and in your heart and in your body going forward. It's fantastic stuff uh, that we see so much across our organisation. What would be the key message that you would leave SIRO for the future? Uh, our colleagues in SIRO all know that uh, there are a number of key messages, but maybe the one I would leave is uh, is the lookout one with three exclamation marks, um, which amuses lots of people, including all my colleagues. And the first is that um, what we do in science, Australian science, Australia's future, our byline, it's about the future. It's looking out in that 10, 15, 20 year time horizon and keeping our eyes on that future and what science can deliver for society. Exclamation mark number two about looking out is Sorrow, and we only exist because these people outside ourselves, the community, our stakeholders, uh, and our job is to meet and anticipate their needs and deliver great benefits uh, to the community, not here, only here in Australia, but in the world. And I guess the third one in Lookout is the, uh, is the Lookout danger, beware. We're in a very, continue to be in a very turbulent, changeable, changing, scary world. One just looks at the you know, financial markets and the crisis there. And that requires us to be careful um, and, to, and to, as we often say, hold hands and stick together because we've got a lot of heavy traffic out there and uh, we know what, what a difference science and technology and innovation can make for our future and therefore we need to, to concentrate uh, on what it can deliver. If I was a young scientist and my first day at CSIRO, and I didn't know anything about the last eight years. What would you say to me if, if you wanted me to, if you, if you, were, if you wanted to capture in, a, in, a, in an essence what you think CSIRO is to a young scientist, what, what would you say to them? I'd say um, CSIRO is a gold mine. Um, someone somewhere in CSIRO can help you on your career journey. Someone somewhere in CSIRO can help you deliver on your 
personal objectives, on your project objectives, on your career objectives. Uh, it is a remarkable organisation. So get into that gold mine, explore, tap into all the resources that you have available to find out where these people are and go and find them and talk to them and work with them. Um, and feel comfortable with boundary crossing par excellence. That's what I tell them. To have a role like you've had, the amount of support you must get by staff, by fellow scientists, it, it must be extraordinary. What's your response to that support you've received throughout your tenure? Look, I, I've just been uh, uh, blown away by uh, uh, that support from, from the team, that the people who have joined the organisation, the, the people that have been around for a long period of time and, and said, we need to do things differently, Geoffrey. Um, and who have been there cheering and in the front line um, and uh, saying, go for it. Uh, and I am forever grateful to my family, for Janet, who have taken some, some real heat. Um, uh, it's always complex going through change. The media sometimes wasn't that kind. Um, and, you know, five o'clock getting up day after day after day, you know, on the road, because that's what the organisation is about uh, across so many sites in our nation was, was heavy going. But if I didn't have that support from home and the wonderful support from the team and, and the support from the board um, and, uh, and, and parliamentarians of, of, all, of all hues, uh, it would have been a tougher ride. What sort of advice would you give yourself on that first day when you started at CSIRO? Wow. In, in retrospect, now, looking back, what, what, what advice would you give to you I'd lighten up, I'd limber up more, I'd relax more, I'd have some conversations uh, that took half an hour as opposed to five minutes. And I'd really find the time to, um, to really dig inside some, some, some issues um, and some people as to where they're at and just, just be more weekendish. Um, in, the, in the working day. What about your plans for life after CSIRO? It's time for some time out. Um, I've, as I said to a lot of people, uh, each of our four lovely boys had this wonderful thing called a gap year between school and university where they went off around the world and did all sorts of things they didn't tell mum and dad about. And um, Janet and I have never had a gap year, so we're taking some adventures uh, with pals uh, around the world and we'll come back and say, okay, uh, what next? Uh, the, the R word, retirement word, isn't, uh, isn't our bag and I think there will be all sorts of opportunities to contribute back into Australian society. We are Australian people now, we've bought a small home in, uh, in Canberra and this is where we're going to be. Um, and then I'll uh, pick up all sorts of um, interesting assignments, I'm sure, where people maybe can feel that I can make a contribution. I'm looking forward to that down the track. What about you personally? What would you miss most about CSIRO? I will miss, um, and I'll be an ambassador for CSRO forever. Uh, I'm really excited about the new chief executive, uh, uh, Megan Clark. I think she's outstanding. It's an outstanding choice, and the organisation's in great shape. I will miss the um, the day-to-day -day interactions, the opportunities I've had just to listen to our, our scientists and engineers and technologists and support people talk about what they do uh, with passion and enthusiasm and talent. Um, and commitment uh, because they're making a difference. That's what I'll miss. Whether I'm in Toowoomba or uh, Darwin or Perth or Clayton or in Adelaide, that's where the buzz is with people that are committed to science and the difference that science makes in the world and the difference that CSRO makes in the world. That's what I'll miss.